Our scripture reading this morning comes to us from the gospel according to Matthew, the 21st verse, beginning, excuse me, the 21st chapter, beginning with the 23rd verse. And when Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came up to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus answered them, I also will ask you one question. And if you tell me the answer, then I also will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, from where did it come? From heaven or man? And they discussed it among themselves, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say from man, we are afraid of the crowd, for they all hold that John is a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts upon the scripture Be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Do you remember Andre Agassi? He was a great tennis player. But do you remember the television commercial that he did for Canon, the company that makes those digital cameras? It was, in my opinion, one of the worst commercials ever made. In the commercial, you saw Andre Agassi running all over the tennis court, making incredible shots while his long, flowing hair was flying here, there, and everywhere. In the background, you heard the clicking of a camera as it took pictures of his athletic exploits. Then at the end of the commercial, Andre holds a camera in his hand and says, because image is everything. Really? Image is everything? Years later, Andre Agassi said in a commercial, excuse me, in an interview, that he came to regret making that commercial. He said it haunted me whether I was doing well on the court or I wasn't. Image is everything. That's what Madison Avenue and Wall Street want you to believe. However, it's a way of thinking that can get you into all kinds of trouble. Just look at what happened to the Pharisees that day when they saw Jesus in the temple. They asked him a question. Jesus, they said, by what authority are you doing these things, and why? who gave you this authority? Simple question. Jesus could have answered the question, but he didn't. Instead, he turned the tables on the Pharisees and asked them a question. Jesus basically said, okay, I'll answer your question if you answer my question. The baptism of John, from where did it come? From heaven or man? Another simple question. But this question put the Pharisees in a bind. It presented them with a dilemma, and they knew it. You see, as far as the Pharisees were concerned, John the Baptist was a fraud. They also knew, however, that a lot of the people were convinced that John the Baptist was a holy man who had been sent to prepare the way for God's only begotten son. So, according to Matthew, the Pharisees didn't answer the question because they were, quote, unquote, afraid of the crowd. They were worried about what people would think of them. They were worried about their image. These days, we call it peer pressure. Teenagers know all about peer pressure. They live with it. They deal with it every day. Peer pressure, however, doesn't evaporate. It doesn't disappear 
when you graduate from high school, though, it stays with you throughout your life. That voice is always there whispering in your ear. What will people think? What will people think if I don't wear designer sunglasses and drive an expensive car? What will people think if I don't follow the latest fads and fashions? In his book, Learning to Lead, J.M. Barry tells a story about peer pressure. The story shows you how Hank Aaron, baseball's home run king, reacted when he found himself on the receiving end of a little peer pressure. And I apologize, but I'm a baseball purist. Hank Aaron is still baseball's home run king. Anyway, Boyce's story has to do with something that happened during the 1957 World Series. The old Milwaukee Braves were playing the New York Yankees. At a crucial moment in one of the games, Henry Aaron walked up to the plate. And when he did, Yogi Berra, the catcher for the Yankees, did everything he could think of to distract him. He even started pointing out all the things that Aaron was doing wrong. He told him that he was holding the bat wrong. Henry, he said, you're holding the bat wrong. You're supposed to hold it so you can read the label. Aaron didn't say a word. He just waited for the next pitch and hit it into the left field bleachers for a home run. After he circled the bases, he touched home plate Then he turned to Yogi and said, I didn't come up here to read. (laughs) When you worry about what people think, it can get you into all kinds of trouble. That may be the reason why Jesus uttered those words of warning in Luke's version of the Sermon on the Mount. Woe unto you when people speak well of you. That's what he said. Jesus said, woe unto you when people speak well of you. When your life is dictated and driven by what people think, you may fit in, but it also may make you miserable. That's because you lose control of your life. You start doing what everyone else thinks you should do, and you start living where everyone else thinks you should live, and buying all the things that everyone else thinks you should buy. When you give in to peer pressure, you may fit in, but your heart isn't going to be filled with the peace that passes all understanding. Your mind isn't going to be filled with the truth that can set you free, and your heart isn't going to, excuse me, and you're not going to find the joy that Jesus was talking about when he said, I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly. No, the only way you can find that peace and that truth and that joy is when you stop worrying about what people think and start focusing instead on what God thinks. That's what Jesus did, and it's the reason why he was able to live his life the way he did. The Pharisees thought that Jesus was a fool for eating with people who were sinners. Jesus, however, didn't care what the Pharisees wanted him to do. He only cared about what God wanted him to do. The disciples thought and wanted Jesus to be a conquering hero who would lead them to fame and glory. Jesus, however, didn't care about who the disciples wanted him to be. He only cared about who God wanted him to be, and that was a suffering servant. The disciples, they told people to stop bringing their children to Jesus so he could bless them because they thought it was a waste of his time. Jesus, however, didn't see it that way which is why he opened his arms wide and said, let the children come to me and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of heaven. Do you remember what Andre Agassi said about that television commercial? He came to regret it. He eventually realized that image isn't everything. 
Last year, he published his autobiography, and in the book, he revealed a big secret. He revealed that his identity was a big lie. It was a lie because that long, flowing hair wasn't his. All those years, he was actually wearing a wig. This is what he wrote. Every morning, I would get up and I would find a piece of my identity on the pillow, in the wash basin, down the plug hole. I asked myself, you want to wear a toupee on the tennis court? I answered myself, what else could I do? Like the Pharisees, he was worried about what people might think of him, and that worry actually cost him a Grand Slam title. It happened at the French Open back in 1990. In his autobiography, Andre wrote, it was a fiasco. The night before the match, I was standing under the shower, and I suddenly felt my wig fall apart. I panicked and called my brother Philly into the room. It's a total disaster, I said. He looked at it and said that he could hold it together with clamps. It took 20 hair clips. When he was done, I asked him, do you think it will hold? He said, just don't move around too much. (laughs) How ridiculous is that? (laughs) The next day, you're going to play in a professional tennis tournament, a Grand Slam final, and your brother is telling you not to move around too much. I guess he goes on to say, of course, I could have played without my hairpiece, but what would all the journalists have written if they knew that all that time I was playing with a wig? Before the match, he prayed, not for victory, but that his hairpiece would not fall off. And the same thought kept going through his mind over and over again. He kept imagining his wig falling onto the clay court and millions of people around the world leaning forward toward their television sets with eyes wide open and asking in dozens of languages and dialects, how did Andre Agassi's hair fall off his head? That worry got the best of him. And because at that point in his life, image was everything, he lost the French Open to Andres Gomez of Ecuador. That's why Andre Agassi came to regret making that commercial. He came to realize that image isn't everything. In his book, Gospel-Centered Discipleship, Jonathan Dodson says that when it comes to image, we need to remember that we have been created in God's image. And it is that image that, quote-unquote, constitutes our essential dignity as human beings. When you realize that, it sets you free to be the person God created you to be, It sets you free to do something that some fifth-grade boys did a number of years ago. It happened at Lake Elementary School out in Ocean View, California. This fifth-grade class was a little unusual because all of the boys in the class were completely bald. One of the boys, however, didn't have a choice when it came to being completely bald. Ian O'Gorman was bald because he was undergoing chemotherapy for lymphoma. When his friend Kyle Hanslick saw Ian's dilemma, he and all the other boys in the class marched themselves down to a local barber and had their heads shaved. Kyle later said, we did it so that we could help him feel better. When you think about it, maybe Andre Agassi was right. Maybe image is everything. 
as long as you remember that you have been created in God's image. Amen.